The Lamborghini Urus is a mental machine. There is no doubt about that. It has incredible levels of performance, both on-road and off-road. But for Lamborghini, that was not enough. For Lamborghini, nothing is ever enough. This is an Urus dialed up to 11. Nobody ever sat in an Urus and said, hey, I think this needs more power, but somebody at Lamborghini did, and they ended up with this. This Urus Performante, it has more power, it is lighter, it's got better aero, all of it to make it a better performance car. That is the focus here, to increase the performance, to dial up the performance. Just listen to that. Here's a fun fact. The Urus Performante, it is actually the record holder for a production SUV up Pikes Peak. It's a hill climb champion. So it only makes sense for us to head over to Nandi Hills, right outside Bangalore, one of the nicest hill climbs around, to test it. Let's start by talking about the engine because that is such an important, such a dominating part of this Urus Performante experience. You've got the same engine, it's the same 4-litre twin-turbo V8, but it makes more power. So power is up 16 bhp to 657 bhp. I really didn't think an Urus ever needed more power, but here you go, more power. Now if you convert that 657 bhp to PS, it's actually 666 PS. That's the devil's number. I think that's a naughty little play on things by Lamborghini, but they're not wrong. This thing is an absolute monster. Now this engine, it's obviously shared with other cars in the group. It's in the Audis, it's in the Porsches, but Lamborghini, their engines, the way they tune them, the way they set them up, they feel so different, they feel so edgy, so aggressive. The regular Urus, it already felt edgier and angrier than everything else out there. And the Performante, it takes that up a notch. So all that, that character of the Lamborghini Urus's engine, all of that has been dialed up to 11 in here. It feels angry, it feels edgy. You can hear it in the way it sounds, you can feel it in the way it goes. It's an engine that likes to rev out as much as it's willing to go, as much as you're brave enough to push it. Oh, it's exhilarating. You know, performance like this, you never get used to it. It never becomes adequate, you know. 666 PS, 657 bhp delivered in this format with this amount of aggressiveness, you'll never get bored. Never, ever, ever. The older Urus, it was powerful, it was quick, but this just takes it to another level. It just rockets the Urus into, a, into another space. Unbelievable. <laughs> and it sounds great, just listen to that. Right now, I'm in sport mode. You've got three driving modes. You've got Strada, Sport, Corsa. Strada, obviously, for the street, does down your throttle aggressiveness. Sorry. Makes everything a little calmer. Put it into sport and now you're talking. You've got sharper responses, an angrier exhaust, harder gear shifts, and then there's the magic, this Corsa. You put it in there, oh, you're in a whole new league. It gets louder inside the cabin. The throttle responses become so direct. You know, you talk about turbocharged engines and turbo lag pretty much doesn't exist here. You've got pinpoint throttle sharpness from a turbo engine. So you've got the advantages of a turbo engine, that slug of torque, 850 Nm. But you've got it over such a wide spread. It's not like you have to wait to rev out the engine to tap into that performance. You just step on it and you're moving. 
There's so much more that goes into the performante to make it the hardcore experience that it is. And I'm talking about the updates to the chassis. Now, you've got the regular Urus platform. Not much has changed there, but suspension. Air suspension, great if you need a blend of comfort and performance. You don't need that here. Here, this is all about performance. So out goes the air suspension, in comes steel springs. Steel springs which are focused on one task, which is handling, managing the body weight of this car much better. You've obviously got bespoke dampers, different from the regular Urus. And you've got a ride height that's lower by 20 mm. Again, that's to make it a better handler. Track width is wider by 16 mm. So lower, wider, all of that makes all of the weight easier to manage. And to aid that weight handling, Lamborghini's also taken out 47 kilos from the car. So it is lighter. Performante badge also means dollops of carbon fiber. It also means a titanium Akrapovich exhaust, which is lighter. The wheels, you've got massive wheels, 23s, optional 23s on this one. Super slick rubber. All of that makes this an absolute manic handler. How does it feel? For starters, the turn-in, super sharp. You dial in a steering input and the nose just darts in there. There's so much front end on this car. There's so much grip. This obviously has active anti-roll. So you've got proper flat cornering. The weight, it feels super well controlled. At no point does it feel like it's getting out of hand. No point does it feel bouncy. Nothing flat, low on it. It just gives you so much confidence to get in and push! It feels so balanced, so beautifully balanced. You can actually drive this like you would drive a sports car. Chuck it in at unbelievable speeds. There's no understeer. There's so much grip. And then there's traction, getting out of corners. Fat tires, sticky tires. And you've also got a torsion differential, which is more aggressive, sends more talk to the rear, you've got active torque vectoring on the rear axle and all of that means when you get out of a corner, when you get back onto the throttle, you've got acres, acres of traction. It just doesn't stop gripping. Feel that, I can't, I can't explain to you what I'm feeling here, the G-forces, the cornering forces on this car are unreal. Now, you must be wondering, all of those changes to the chassis, the new springs, the lower ride height, the bigger wheels, does that affect the ride? Yes, it does. It is firm. So over really sharp ditches, you will feel it. But you don't feel it over smaller bumps, over wavier patches. In fact, over small wavy bumps and roads, which are just uneven, not broken, it actually has really good body control because it wants to stay planted. It wants to stay sucked to the ground. What a thing. Let me quickly run you through the lightweighting changes that they've made to the car as well. So you've got carbon fiber everywhere on the bumpers. The whole hood is carbon fiber. The rear bumpers, the diffuser, all of that. And it's naked carbon fiber. You can see it on the car. Beautiful, it looks so beautiful. The roof, that's optional carbon fiber. You can spec it on your car, lower the center of gravity of your Urus Performante. And you've got more aero, so you've got a rear wing on this car that adds 38% more downforce than whatever was on the older Urus. So this genuinely is a car that focuses on being more stuck to the ground with aero. You can see it all over the car. It's got little vents and creases. You've got vents on the hood. Again, for better cooling of the engine, but also for better downforce. And it looks like an absolute monster. The Urus always look mean. This looks unbelievably cool. There's a lot of performance SUVs around, but few do theatricality, drama, performance in the same way that the Euros Performante does. My God, it's unbelievable. Thank God for this Alcantara steering. My palms are sweating. Bloody hell. 
probably out of breath. And they're letting us drive, drive. Up Nandi Hills, down Nandi Hills. We are pushing. Really getting to the limits. I mean, nowhere close to the limits, honestly, but as far as you can go on a road like Nandi Hills, it's a narrow road. This is a fast car. <laughs> You'll never get tired of those pops and crackles. Sounds so good, so good. This thing just defies everything that you know about what a car can do. 2.1 tons, drives like a sports car. Makes you feel things that a sports car makes you feel. Makes you giggle like a sports car. That rawness is what gets you, you know, like, you can sit in fast cars, electric cars, they're bloody fast. I've sat in fast electric cars, but nothing prepares you for the rawness of that engine, the rawness of that exhaust, the drama that comes with a car like this. I'm looking at one over here. I'm looking at one in my rear view mirror. I mean, we're three cars in a convoy over here. Oh, it's an unbelievable sight. Unbelievable. Right, so the other trick that the Urus Performante has up its sleeve is rally mode. Put it into rally mode here, what it essentially does is it puts the drivetrain into super aggressive mode and makes the car really oversteery. So all of the anti-roll bars, the damping, all of that is set up to be able to slide, to be able to have a little bit of fun. And the throttle responses are immediate. It's also reactive. So get it into a corner and you can immediately feel the tail coming out. You don't have to do much. And you gas it, and instantly the tail slides out. It's also fairly easy to catch. You've got to be alert. But if you are alert, it's a lot of fun. This is the beauty of a super SUV. You can bring it onto dirt tracks. It's not often that you find dirt tracks like this, but if you do find one, nothing like it. This here is the Bren Raceway, one of the newer racetracks coming up outside of Bangalore. And so much over still. So much fun. Sudden change in car, I know, but the blue one that we were driving earlier is now out on track. But the Urus Performante, at rupees 4.22 crores, it is absolutely unbelievable. It's hard to get the words to describe what it can do. It is a super SUV, and while there are many other super SUVs out there, there's nothing that comes close to the theatricality, the drama, the sheer sensations that an Urus can deliver. The breadth of ability that it has is unreal and something like rally mode which allows you to push the car beyond its limits and maybe hold it there. That's an undescribable feeling. To be able to do so, so effortlessly is a testament to the amount of fun that you can have in a car like this. This car is just fun.